Our final soft chalk lesson in unit one, lecture three, deals with our third type of cell wall, the acid fast cell wall. Fundamental statements or bullet points for this soft chalk lesson. Uh, because of the nature of the cell wall, acid fast bacteria stain a reddish color after acid fast staining. The genus Mycobacterium and the genus Nocardia are among the few bacteria that possess an acid fast cell wall. The acid fast cell wall consists of a thin inner layer of peptidoglycan linked to a layer of rabinoglactin, which in turn is linked to an outer membrane containing mycolic acids and overlaid with a variety of polypeptides and glycolipids. Porins are required to transport small hydrophilic molecules through the outer membrane of the acid fast cell wall. The acid fast cell wall activates both body's innate immune defenses and adaptive immune defenses. The body activates innate immunity by recognizing molecules unique to microorganisms and not associated with human cells, and these are called pathogen associated molecular patterns or PAMPs. PAMPs in turn bind to pattern recognition receptor or PRRs on defense cells which then triggers the production of inflammatory cytokines. <clears throat> Inflammation is the means by which the body delivers defense cells and defense molecules to an infection site. But excessive inflammation can be harmful and even deadly to the body. PAMPs associated with the acid fast cell wall include peptidoglycan monomers, arabinogalactin, and mycolic acids. Cell wall molecules also trigger adaptive immunity, such as the production of antibody molecules against the bacterium. And finally, there's a few antimicrobial chemotherapeutic agents that inhibit acid fast cell wall synthesis. So those are our bullet points and we just have a few uh, detailed learning objectives. Number one, state what color acid fast bacteria stain after the acid fast stain procedure and briefly describe why. And describe the composition of an acid fast cell wall and indicate the beneficial functions to the bacterium of peptidoglycan, arabinoglactin, mycolic acid, and porins. And we also have a highlighted bacterium in this one, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacterium that causes tuberculosis. So looking at the acid fast cell wall or cell envelope. Uh, now acid fast stain, as we learned earlier, stain poorly with the gram stain. They can sometimes appear weakly gram positive or gram variable where they can appear gram positive or gram negative. Often they just don't stain very well at all with the gram stain procedure. And that is due largely to their unique cell wall as we'll see shortly. So these are usually identified using what's called the acid fast staining procedure uh, developed by bacteriologists like Zeal and Neeson who came up with the staining procedure. So the acid fast bacteria with an acid fast cell wall resist decolorization with a powerful decolorizer called acid alcohol used during the acid fast staining procedure. Uh, the bacteria are first stained with a dicarbofuxin, that's the initial dye, which is a fuchsia or reddish color. And the acid fast bacteria resist decolorization with acid alcohol and retain the carbofuxin uh, appearing red uh, under the microscope. Whereas virtually all other bacteria and uh, eukaryotic cells and such will decolorize and pick up the bluish counter stain. So as we see uh, in figure 1b, this is an acid fast stain of sputum from a person with tuberculosis. And we can see the fuchsia colored mycobacterium tuberculosis there, acid fast bacilli. But other bacteria found in the sputum that we see scattered about here, microbiota and such, mucus, white blood cells, epithelial cells, all of those decolorize and pick up the counter stain. So you have to really search for the uh, acid fast bacilli among the concentrated sputum 
to get a positive acid fast state. And uh, there's only a few important ones we're going to be looking at here. Uh, the two main genera of bacteria that are acid fast is, are the genus, uh, is the genus Mycobacterium and the genus Nocardia. Mycobacterium includes Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis. Mycobacterium leprae, which causes leprosy. Mycobacterium avium intracellular complex, sometimes called MAC, that uh, was a problem in highly immunosuppressed AIDS patients early on. And then there's also a genus called Nocardia uh, that sometimes causes infections in typically immunocompromised patients. And there's a little quick self-check you can do on that. So let's look at the structure and composition of the acid fast cell wall. Now, uh, in addition to peptidoglycan, the acid fast bacteria have an outer membrane, kind of like gram negatives have an outer membrane, but it's chemically quite distinct. The outer membrane contains large amounts of glycolipids, and especially glycolipids called mycolic acids. And in fact, in the genus Mycobacterium, about 60% of its acid fast cell wall is mycolic acid. So if we take a look at our diagram here, we start out uh, in the acid fast cell wall with a thin inner layer of peptidoglycan, typically only a couple of layers thick, kind of like in a gram negative cell wall which of course lies external to the cytoplasmic membrane as we see in figure two. The peptidoglycan layer is then linked to another layer called arabinogalactin, composed of two sugars, diarabinose and degalactose. So we see the arabinogalactin layer here connected to the peptidoglycan layer. The arabinogalactin is then linked to an outer membrane containing high molecular weight mycolic acids, sometimes referred to as the arabinogalactin mycolic acid layer. And that here's the mycolic acids you see, the red branching structures here. And then that's overlaid with a layer of polypeptides and other mycolic acids uh, consisting of uh, free lipids, glycolipids, peptidoglycolipids, and some other unique lipids like liporabinomannan, uh, PIM, and such. But the main thing you need to worry about is the, in terms of the layers of the cell wall here, is that it has a peptidoglycan layer surrounded by a rabinoglactin layer, and then an outer membrane composed mainly of myco, mycolic acid and other uh, glycolipids. Now, like the outer membrane of a gram negative, uh, this is quite impermeable. So um, there are pores in the membrane made of pore forming proteins called porins. And these are needed to transport small hydrophilic molecules through the outer membrane of an acid fast cell wall. The outer surface of the acid fast cell wall is studded with surface proteins, and like in gram positive and gram negative bacteria, they vary with the strain and species. And finally, the periplasm is the gelatinous material between the peptidoglycan and the cytoplasmic membrane. So that's the appearance of the acid fast cell wall a thin layer of peptidoglycan, only a couple layers thick, a layer of arabinogalactin, a layer of mycolic acid overlaid with uh, mycolic acid and other glycolipids. And in that outer membrane are porins through which materials have to enter to get inside the bacteria. So in terms of function of the acid fast cell wall components, what these components do for the bacterium, of course, peptidoglycan does what it's supposed to do. It prevents osmotic lysis. The arabinogalactin layer uh, that's linked to both the peptidoglycan and the mycolic acid outer membrane also probably adds strength to the cell wall. Now it's this outer membrane that's very unique to the acid fast cell wall and has some interesting characteristics. The mycolic acids and other glycolipids impede the entry of chemicals 
causing bacteria to grow very slowly. So one of the characteristics of acid-fast bacteria is they tend to grow quite slowly uh, because nutrients don't enter very well. That mycolic acid is what we call a waxy lipid. And so it's like the bacteria have this layer of wax coating them, and that's quite impermeable. So the only way that nutrients can enter um, an acid-fast bacterium is they have to go through the pores created by the porins. But in acid-fast bacteria, there's far fewer pores compared to the gram-negative cell wall, and the pores are much longer. So this uh, contributes significantly to the decreased permeability of the acid-fast bacteria. So they grow slowly because nutrients don't enter very well, and that would seem to be totally a disadvantage. But the advantage of that acid-fast cell wall is that they're more resistant to chemicals such as disinfectants, antiseptics, and such, and antibiotics, and the lysosomal comp uh, components of phagocytes. So it's harder for phagocytes to kill these acid-fast bacteria uh, because they're more resistant to the lysosomal components found in the lysosomes. And they're also more resistant, of course, to some of our control agents, like we said, of antiseptics, disinfectants, and antibiotics. Also in the uh, acid-fast cell wall, we have surface proteins that vary with the strain of species. And like uh, in the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, some of these surface proteins function as enzymes to carry out chemical reactions near the cell surface. Some serve as adhesins, allowing bacteria to adhere to host cells, colonize and resist flushing. Uh, there are some secretory systems that certain acid-fast bacteria have as well. And the periplasm contains enzymes for nutrient breakdown. So we're going to see uh, in one of our labs early on in the semester where we use mycobacterium flei that it does take longer for this organism to grow because of its fairly impermeable cell wall, which allows nutrients to enter more slowly through the pores. But also that provides an advantage in terms of allowing bacteria to resist uh, harmful chemicals. Most, many of the routine disinfectants that would be used to disinfect areas of a hospital may not kill acid-fast bacteria. So you have to make sure that they're using uh, disinfectants that are mycobactericidal that will kill mycobacterium. And we have only a handful of antibiotics that are effective against acid-fast bacteria. Uh, because of that impermeable outer membrane and because of the uh, pores being long and few in number. So whereas we have literally hundreds of brands of antibiotics to treat gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria, we only have a few that are effective against acid-fast bacteria. And of course, the bacterium can mutate to become resistant to even the ones few we do have. So we see quite a different thing when it comes to treating mycobacterium tuberculosis in people with TB. Typically with antibiotics, a person might take them for five days or two weeks or whatever. But typical treatment of mycobacterium tuberculosis can be six to nine months with a combination of two or three drugs to try to make sure that the bacterium is eradicated from the body. So it takes much longer for the drugs to kill the bacteria than it does other bacteria. And uh, it's harder for the drugs to enter, so we only have a relatively few that are effective. Now, just like the gram-positive and the gram-negative cell wall that we looked at in those soft chalk lessons, uh, the acid-fast cell wall can also initiate body defenses. And since we talked about that in more detail under the gram-positive cell wall soft chalk lesson and the gram-negative cell wall soft chalk lesson, this is pretty much the same information. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of briefly go through it here. So remember, as we've mentioned previously, we have two immune systems, the innate immune system, which is antigen nonspecific, 
Uh, it begins immediately within several hours after exposure to a microbe, and it's the one we're born with. It's usually our body's initial response to eradicating microbes and preventing infection. And then adaptive immunity is antigen specific. It takes several days to become protective. This is designed to remove a specific antigen and we develop this throughout our life. So as we've mentioned several times previously, the initiation of innate immunity is by recognizing molecules that microbes have that human cells don't have but these are molecules that are found associated often with groups of microorganisms where we can recognize relatively few microbial molecules and recognize large groups of microbes. And we call these pathogen associated molecular patterns or PAMPs. And in terms of the pathogenic mycobacterial species, PAMPs include mycolic acid, and arabinoglactin found only in the acid fast cell walls, and of course peptidoglycan monomers found in all bacteria with a cell wall. The PAMPs in turn on the microbe, the pathogen associated molecular patterns bind to pattern recognition receptors on our defense cells, and that causes them to synthesize and secrete uh, cytokines, and many of these cytokines are inflammatory cytokines that promote inflammation. They also activate the complement pathways, another innate immune response, and the coagulation pathway. And of course, as we again have mentioned several times, inflammation is how we deliver defense cells and defense chemicals where they're needed. So when the PAMP binds to the pattern recognition receptors, that triggers a production of inflammatory cytokines, which leads to vasodilation of blood vessels, allowing plasma and defense cells to leave the blood and enter the tissue at the infected or injured site. And of course, proteins and polysaccharides associated with the acid fast cell wall function as antigens. And uh, what we recognize, of course, are epitopes of those antigens, five to 15 amino acids sticking out of a protein antigen like we've seen in figure 3A or three or four sugars branching off of a polysaccharide antigen like in figure uh, 3B that should be. And again, we have two branches to adaptive immunity. Humoral immunity is the production of antibody molecules in response to an antigen. And then cell mediated immunity is a cellular response involving cytotoxic T lymphocytes activated macrophages, activated NK cells, and cytokines in response to an antigen. And actually against mycobacterium tuberculosis, uh, there's a fairly strong cell-mediated immunity against the organism. And of course, we have the same significance of the acid fast cell wall components to pathogenesis. Uh, most of this is due to an excessive inflammatory response. So most of the damage to the lungs found during tuberculosis is thought to be due to inflammatory effects from excessive cytokine production, especially the potent inflammatory cytokine tumor necrosis factor alpha or TNF alpha, which causes kind of a cytokine a storm in the lungs. And then the release of toxic lysosomal components of macrophage that are trying to kill mycobacterium tuberculosis. So most of the harm, again, is due to the body's defenses trying to get rid of the organism, which is difficult to remove. And finally, there are a few antimicrobial agents that inhibit acid fast cell wall synthesis, which we use to treat mycobacterium species such as mycobacterium tuberculosis. For example, INH or isoniazid blocks the incorporation of mycolic acid into the acid fast cell wall. So it stops the bacteria from synthesizing these mycolic acids, thus it has a dysfunctional membrane and that can kill the organism. And ethambutol can interfere with the incorporation of arabinogalactin. 
And then pyrazinamide inhibits some of the fatty acid synthesis found in the outer membrane. So these are three drugs that uh, can be effective against mycobacterium species and against that acid fast cell wall because they're interfering specifically with components of that acid fast cell wall. And finally, there's a little self-quiz you can do on the acid-fast cell wall. 